Welcome to the Global Center for Christ Consciousness. Please join me in giving a nice warm welcome to our guest musician for today, Ananda Das. Namaste, everybody. I literally am just off the plane at about uh, less than 48 hours ago. 31 hours of travel, and uh, I'm back. Yay. Yeah. But I, I got to stay this time six weeks in India, three trainings, two of which I was playing for, and then another one I took myself. And um, to say that I'm deepening on this path is, is uh, would be an understatement. <laughs> it's, um, it's just utterly profound. So what I can do right now is just offer you a be beautiful chant and uh, just offer my, my love and devotion through the transmission of the chant and the tradition of this incredible bhakti yoga tradition, the yoga of devotion, the yoga of the heart, and the yoga of singing and mantra. So repeat it after me. It's quite easy. Chit, say chit. Chit is consciousness. Chit Ananda. So we say Ananda. Bliss. Chit Ananda Rupa. Rupa. Say Rupa. Rupa. Rupa means the form. The form of the consciousness. The blissful consciousness. Shivo Hum. Say Shiva. Right? Shiva. Supreme consciousness. The formless. And then when you say Aham. Aham means I am. But when you put Shiva and Aham together, then the A changes to the O. So then you go Shivo Hum. So say Shivo Hum. So maybe you've heard that. Chirananda Rupa Shivo Hum Shivo Hum. Okay? So we'll try that together. Thank you. 
Heavenly Father, Mother God, whose presence is glory, whose presence is light, love, peace, joy, abundance. All that you are, Father, Mother God, you've created us to be. Somehow we've chosen to not believe that, to stand in the way of it being true. We stand in the way with limiting beliefs, judgments, and so on, resentments, unhealed wounds. Not today. Today we choose that that which is, is. That which you created to be becomes our memory, our knowing, our consciousness. In this moment, we set aside all that is unlike your beauty, and we ask for your glorious presence to be your holy children, and that your holy children see that presence in themselves and in each other. This is our truth. This is our affirmation. God is, I am, we are. And so it is. Please join me in reading our mission statement, which you will find on the white cards in the seat backs in front of you. And together we say, the Global Center for Christ Consciousness is a spiritual center for students and masters on the spiritual path. We are dedicated to awakening the inner Christ and to creating a world of love, peace, joy, and abundance. And now for our sacred reading for today. From White Eagle, you must learn so to act so to live each day that you are naturally, at all times, a being of love. 
Love is not sentimentality. Love is seeing good, seeing God, recognizing the divine law of cause and effect working throughout all life. To love is to be tolerant towards all, towards all the happenings in daily life, to be patient, thoughtful, kind, and meek. All these qualities are contained in that one word, love. And so it is. And let's give another warm welcome to our guest musician, Adan Dadal.
Those of you who are guests, my name is Michael Mirdad, and I serve here as part of our spiritual leadership. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Can you share with me uh, what topics you'd like me to cover today? Tribulation. Oh, some light topics. <laughs> Death, tribulation, the final judgment of the world. Yeah. Anyone else? Surrender. Well, there was another one in there somewhere. First day learning. What is it? First day learning. Hmm. Dog had dementia. <laughs> <laughs> what? Magic. Okay, one moment now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. That's good. So, <laughs> I think one of them was aging. Is that what it was? Angels. <laughs> the topic of losing your mind and aging. Oh, I get it. Got it. Got, got the best of me there. Um, so, very good. Everything from tribulation to ascension. Oh, yeah. So, you know, these topics, as always, I mean, they're just fantastic. And, and I love that they're not, like, lightweight. They're, 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 first of all, they're varied, diverse, but they're deep. Each one of those is very, very beautiful, profound. Um, <clears throat> It's kind of important for us to understand the concepts of tribulation. What does that mean? Because some people actually make that their religion. Coming tribulation. Well, there is coming tribulation. Anytime you want to change, that part of you that isn't where you want to be ends up being purged away. I mean, you know, when you replace tires on a car, there, those aren't the tires you put back on the car. New tires means discarding the old tires. So there's a process, and, and it's interesting how much we talk about praying for a new world and how much we complain about the changing into a new world. I mean, it's just kind of funny, but that's humans, you know? Um, not having a full awareness of all that's really happening. So the tunnel vision causes more fear. But then why would God subject us to tunnel vision? God doesn't. 
God created us in its image all knowing, so someone along the way opted for tunnel vision, narrow thinking, and therefore living in fear. Because not knowing all the pieces causes fear, right? Well, who did that? Obviously Eve, but <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Just so we can learn so much from any one story about the human race. Eve, what have you been doing? The serpent made me do it. You know, Adam, she made me. Everybody just passed the buck. So there's all these complexities and tribulation, but don't, don't be overwhelmed. Don't make it into more. It's very interesting because we are all knowing. We just don't seem like it. And that means even when you're going through a personal dark night of the soul or global dark night, like tribulation from a Christian standpoint, it looks very horrendous when you're down in the tunnel vision of it and you're caught in the pain of it. Stepping back, it's more like, oh yeah, well of course. All of a sudden there's more insight. And with that insight comes sort of a, a sense of peace. Unfortunately, mankind has taught themselves to think, if I only knew what's going to happen, I would have more peace. See, that's called the inner control freak. <laughs> God tells us, no, no. If you had more peace, you would handle the changes differently. No, if you just told us what's happening in the changes and we knew all the information, we would feel peace, which is why we don't have it. Because we're not seeking first the consciousness of God and then the rest is covered, the rest is taken care of. You know, it's, it's kind of like, um, I, I could exit a relationship far easier, Lord, if you would just show me the stats of the next person. <laughs> I mean, I want it. I want measurements. I want <laughs> medical records, personal history, when they're showing up, how long they'll be here, right? Video. I want, you know, all of it. <laughs> you know, glow like some cosmic dating service. You know, and then all of a sudden it would be like the other person, you know, bye, you know, scoot them out the door because the other one's working into their way in. It's, it's all just control freak stuff, but back we've got to go for peace first i i really it's the consciousness of god that's what i really want need am ready for the rest will come with that seek first the consciousness of god the kingdom of heaven and the rest comes it's it'll be all right but humans in their seeming separation from god they don't seek first the kingdom they seek first the stuff why cuz that's what they seek the stuff. So we want stuff based on our consciousness of stuff. Instead of choosing first that which you can't see, which sounds kind of crazy. You know, um, you're in a guidance counseling meeting at the end of high school and they say, where would you like to go? I'm open because I'm just trusting in the unseen. You know, that's not like they give you five-star rating with that. They're like, wow. <laughs> you know, okay, this person's just going to become a surfer. You know, um, <laughs> It doesn't fit the world's dynamics. But there are a lot of misunderstandings about who we are, where we're going. We're ascending. And I'm not giving you the, uh, um, it's going to happen in a split second. A few of us are just going to be so cosmic that we ascend. Ascension, we have to understand it's, it's all or nothing. I, I can't ascend without you. You can't ascend without me. I know some people believe differently. The Lord thy God is one, is the primary law of the universe. It's the number one law of all traditions and religions, that God is one. Whether you're talking Taoist or Jew, the Lord thy God is one, which means its children can't partly ascend. We're going to have partly a party, <laughs> and then now restore partly heaven? It doesn't make sense. We are all in this together. Yes, some of us are further along, for sure. Some of us uh, learn more quickly, with less resistance. Some of us are going through hell, tribulation, before they get to heaven. But that someone else is me. It's a part of me that has deeper, darker pieces to purge or to heal. At the end of the day, we never even left heaven. So that's why everything is okay, like the very last part of the chanting we were doing. Everything is okay, not because of the insanity of the world. 
everything's okay because only God is. The rest is our imposing insanity onto what would have been otherwise a harmonious existence. So the doorway, really, the doorway to the kingdom, the doorway to God is our heart center. How's that feel? Right? Cool. The key to that kingdom is love. And yet the heart center is not the highest chakra or level of consciousness, which some people get disturbed hearing because they're so heart-centered. The Buddhist concept, love, compassion, that's humanitarianism, Aquarian age, the new age, it's all heart-centered. But it's not the highest center we have. But it is the highest one in the body, this torso. It's the highest one of human consciousness. But there's another one that is beyond the human, and that is the I am presence, the upper three chakras. The heart has some very distinct and powerful purposes which, you know, I'll try to get into as we go, but the heart is the doorway to the kingdom. It doesn't do me much good, though, to stand in the doorway, the kingdom being like a garden of Eden. So here's the garden. This is the doorway. So I stand in the doorway looking at the garden. Wow, it's beautiful. But you didn't enter. That's the difference between the highest human level of consciousness, love and compassion and so on, to absolute divinity, which seems a bit out of reach for some of us, you know, in this world. Like, this, I can barely do this. How could I ever do this? But there's ways to that that I'll try to describe as we go and address your questions. Learning and angels and ascension. Our angels are here to help us in this process. When we call it ascension, it's not a, just a metaphysical term. Ascension is actually inevitable. It's not like a, a magic thing, a, a magic formula, a, a moment of... Wow, that could happen. It is inevitable. We've never left God. Therefore, our dream that we're separate from God down in this world is simply something we wake up from and we go home. We wake up, which is like reaching heart-level consciousness. My lower three chakras rep represent my humanness. That's the part of me I have to heal. When, when God tells Adam and Eve, I want you to go into the garden and subdue all of the creatures. It's not just talking about mankind subduing creatures, animals. When God said, I want you to go out, subdue the earth, it was talking about you and me subduing our human nature. Your human nature has tried to take off and take you away from God. You need to step up and take control of that. Not control like a heavy word, but I mean, you need to step up, take responsibility. So instead of sitting here in our soul, knowing the truth of God, but succumbing to the illusions of the ego, we're told like Krishna riding, you know, on that chariot with the four horses you often see depicted in Hindu uh, art. It means your four chakras. You need to show up and take control of those. You need to say, I am in charge of my experience. And when I say I am, I'm only still talking about my soul and my four lower chakras, human chakras which means my three human ones and my soul. So the heart chakra is very important for various reasons. Some people overemphasize it because, you know, and you, and you meet these people all the time, they talk like this. <laughs> I'm so heart-centered that I can't even be heard. <laughs> because being heard would mean I'm human. I'm just, you know. And, and you, you know that's not how... <laughs> how they always speak, you know. <laughs> it's, it's not really an integrated thing, but it's beautiful. It's nice. They speak softly. Um, so some people actually think the words heart chakra are just like that in itself. Uh, I'm ascending just because I said the words heart chakra because it's so cosmic. It's, it's just kind of, you know, more <laughs> bogus, okay? Stuff of this world, it's just kind of silly. The real heart chakra is, I'm showing up. I can't be here without the word responsibility. Oh, no, I was hoping that being in my heart meant I could be irresponsible and breathy and spaced out. No, 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 that's actually your anti-root chakra. So what is your consciousness? You walk around and say, I'm just 
Instead of I'm all heart centered, just say I'm very anti root chakra. Because that's really what you're doing more. You're just trying to be a, a fighting against this human stuff. Pretending to be in your heart. Really being in your heart means love, forgiveness. Those are the techniques. Those are the tools of a heart-centered person. Love, yes, compassion. Buddha consciousness, compassion, right? But it's patience, forgiveness. All, all these concepts are beautiful. And oneness. Oneness puts me in my heart. See, because heart is synonymous with the Aquarian age, the sign of Aquarius, which also means humanitarianism. So thinking of us all as one already takes me here. Humans like to think if I, you know, had what I want, I would feel peace. Same with the heart. If I just talk heart center, I'm there. You actually reach the heart by acting it, doing it, being it. Think in terms of oneness. Don't think if I get to my heart, those things will come. You have to get to those things. You have to own them. You have to step up and integrate them, not just say the words. You have to be that thing. And we're thinking, you know, again, it just blurting it makes it happen. No, no. Getting into the consciousness. Seek first the presence, and then the, the rest will come. So get into that place. Start thinking in terms of, I, we're all in this together. You know, if you're a counselor, a nurse, a doctor, whatever, dental, dental technician, yoga instructor, mother, father, think in terms of, I'm not here fixing you as a healer. I'm not here counseling you as the client. I'm not here just parenting you. We're in this together. This is a role I'm playing. And how can I not just do this role as your superior? How can I be the presence of the divine mother for you today? And I'm doing it as a mom, a dad, a CEO, whatever role, a supervisor, whatever roles I play. You know, getting into that humility of the highest I can do is be the presence of God while still on earth. Then you know what happens next? I'm no longer doing it on earth. I am it. You see, but it's not through tons of little repairs. It's the presence, living that presence. So subdue the earth means wake up and take responsibility for your human nature. And I'm not dissing the human nature. First of all, you don't have a human nature. You're not a human being. You're not a body. You're a divine being. But while here, you got to play the game. So while you're here, yes, you got to look at those human callings, those things that try to mess with you and control you, and you've got to say, no, I'm aware. I'm, get, I'm the chooser. The heart chakra is where your soul, that's the home of your soul. That's where the, you are the chooser. I can choose to be divine or non-divine. I can be loving or fearful and hateful, resentful. It's choice. The choice is made in your soul. You might voice the choice with your human body verbally, through your human emotions, or your human intellect, three chakras down here. But the choice is made here. Those others just reflect it. If I try to make my human body or emotions act a certain way, it won't last. You know why? Because it's not integrated. I have to realize this is my choice. I am such and such. The rest will follow because you're subduing it. Like Krishna, the four horses are under your command. So real love is, you know, and when I say love, I'm not talking about romance. Real love is something, I think it was in our sacred reading this morning. Real love is, is really more a reflection. It's like unconditional love. It's more of a reflection of divine love. So I'm not talking about human, one, you know, one-to-one -one romance. And I'm not talking about uh, uh, love of, of children or love of nature things. I'm talking about a state of mind. And when we even talk about, I'm, I'm going to get into a state of the heart chakra, what does that mean? That means developing a sense of love, peace, joy. Yes, that's, and that's my thing. Oneness. Yes, I'm on my way. It's also, strangely, the word wisdom. Wisdom is one of the heart chakra attributes, but we think of wisdom as sort of a high-end rational thinking, but it isn't. Wisdom is the word is synonymous with the divine mother. So wisdom, it almost means accessing your divine feminine self, which is wise to do. So love is wisdom and wisdom is love. If you don't have love, you can't have wisdom. If you don't have wisdom, you can't have love. See, they're mutually exclusive. So 
when we see this, when we understand this, when you're applying, you think you're just trying to be more patient. I'm, I'm really working on forgiveness. You're not just working on things. When we're doing the work we do, guys, when we, we come here and we fill up with ideas and we practice it, we go home, we, we watch videos or we read books, and we work to practice it. Hopefully, people are at that level to know that you got to live it, obviously. But it's an interesting thing because we, we get filled up, but they're not just things you're doing, practicing patience. What you're actually doing, usually unconsciously, is you're opening your heart center. Practicing more patience means... I'm opening my heart. Learning to love and forgive means I'm opening my heart. But the heart isn't just a cool new age word. Opening the heart means what? I have gotten to the gate of heaven. Nice. So every time you forgive, remember, you didn't just do a little cool something. You have returned to the gates of heaven. That's, that's no small task. It's fantastic. Does the ego... In, in like that? No. Does the ego endorse it? No. Will the ego let that be an easy peasy thing? No. You'll get to the, you'll minimize it. You know, you'll shame yourself for it because I was being forgiving, but that person's not being very nice back. So now you shut down the forgiveness, which means you shut the gate again and you're back into this again. <clears throat> it's very interesting to me because God, you know, we're we're the light of God, but yet. We just seem like we're just such dense people, you know, or as Jethro Tull calls it, thick as a brick. <laughs> like, it's, you know, people just, you know, we're like just masonry, man. Just, just thick as a brick, thick headed, you know, just so dense and needing to return to this place where we realize I'm, I'm the presence of God. I am, but I seem to have forgotten. So I fall into a dense world, and then I started becoming dense to live in a dense world. Started incarnating again and again, and at best look like, you know, I'll just reincarnate forever until I finally get it. But why not just get it now? Oh, well, no, that's impossible. And so it is. <laughs> I mean, why not just live dangerously? Well, maybe I can get it now. Well, I don't think that's easy. Well, have you tried? Right? If, if everything is in the now and God is in the present moment, what it means is in each now moment, I can choose again. The way of God. The awakening. God consciousness. This isn't all theory. I'm talking really practical stuff here. And, and when you get to the concepts of like... Uh, the body or stories we hear, Adam and Eve, you know, the God, Garden of Eden, it starts tying in with other topics, believe it or not. Chakras. You know, when Adam and Eve ate from the fruit of the tree of knowledge, it meant they were trying to rebel and individuate away from God's knowingness. God is, I'm not. I'm a free thinker. There's nothing free at all about your thinking when it's ego-based. It's always imprisonment. So you're not free at all. So the serpent, which isn't actually a snake, but it is a being who's capable of igniting the kundalini energy in humans that are still ethereal. The humans come to the earth plane. They're saying, we just have left God. We're, we're feeling this lightness to ourselves and, and, and an ethereal vibe, which is much denser than our divinity, but it's halfway there, halfway to density. And it wasn't just far, it just wasn't far enough. Instead, these, these beings, uh, kind of the demonic beings, start messing with the humans that came here. And that temptation to Eve was <clears throat> to ignite the serpent energy in her. Stimulation. Eating from the tree, the, the tree was symbolized as pomegranate. It meant fruit, fruitfulness, fertility. So it was about reproduction. It was about sexuality, believe it or not. So Eve is seduced by the serpent. But why does half the world say the serpents are a symbol of wisdom and half the world says temptation? Because the half that's masculine in its philosophies and religions have made wisdom, the serpent, an evil symbol. Why? Because wisdom is of the mother. So it's the male energy kind of combating or shutting down the female. 
So how do we get back, how do we understand kundalini to be a feminine trait? Again, when the heart is awakening, there's a tone that goes out to the whole being, my whole being, that like we have arrived to the heart. When that happens, there's a, an energy at our base of our spine. The kundalini starts hearing the sound, calling her, because it's shakti, the, the female energy in us, starts rising. And she could rise up to the heart where, if she's met with love, she rises further up. But if your kundalini starts rising, which is part of your ascension process, which I'll keep elaborating on, as that energy is rising, if it gets to the heart and finds cruelty, unhealed wounds, here's what it does. It doesn't rise up. It shoots forward to your descending channel. Watch this. Gets caught in that wave and is brought and it shoots downward into your pelvis. So that which was becoming powerful energy hits here, goes forward, forward like so, shoots downward, and now you know what you have? You are falling into hell, which is where that concept comes from. Falling. See? It's us. We didn't rise. We fell. And the painful experience that once that energy hits the pelvis, which is known as hell, which, why? Because of the judgments we have against pelvic kinds of things, like judging Elvis the pelvis. <laughs> That's what they used to call him. You know, he thought it was funny. It was kind of corny. He thought, wow, you know, people are just so immature, he said. But how dare you move your pelvis? What that means is, <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, but anyway, how dare you? But you know why? Because everybody was so imprisoned in hell, their own pelvises. Don't move your pelvis because it might make me want to move mine. And oh, well, what are you doing to me? I'm Eve and you're the serpent and you're turning me on, you know? <laughs> so the devil made me do it, right? So it's just so strange because I was supposed to be free all the time and I got caught and felt shame. Why shame to the pelvis? Why shame to those organs? Because subconsciously we know that once upon a time we were ethereal beings and something taught us, tempted us, or whatever you want to call it, to raise kundalini in our body, and it was evil. You know why it was evil? Because it was, I want to be awakened myself, not God. So it was about, your eyes will be opened if you eat from the tree. Why? Because when energy served, surged through the center of my being, it fed something that became materialized called nerves. When those nerves started becoming materialized, how did that happen? Because I put energy into them. Now the nerves started solidifying. When they solidified, so my energy systems, my nerves, eventually skin, which is why Adam and Eve are given skins once they fall. Because they materialize from being ethereal beings into dense people, humans. That said... The kundalini, it says, the serpent tells Eve, your eyes will be opened. Wow, I mean, that's just so cool. That's why you'll see this, you know, this concept, the serpent up and your eyes will be opened. That's the kundalini energy. And the serpent was telling the truth and yet lying. Because it didn't tell you this. The energy, the eyes that opened by the energy surging through your body once upon a time, the eyes that were opened are these that see dualistically. So, so the serpent gave you a body so that you can be independent. Well, that sounds empowering. It's not like some sort of, we're at a political rally. I'm going to give you things that it never produces. <laughs> so my eyes are opened. See? Oh, but you know what happened that's really sad? This eye closed. My third eye, my God eye, my divine mind closed, and I started tree of knowledge, which means I will make decisions based on my opinions, what I see with my own eyes, individuating from God. So the serpent solidified us, and now when we call on the Divine Mother to assist us in our spiritual awakening, she will now purify that which was made evil. Still kundalini, but done differently. Now there's an actual awakening the other looks like an awakening, but it awakened us into our human limited selves from our spiritual grand selves. 
Now she's going to say, well, since you've done that and you've got this body, it has to be glorified. It has to be turned into light. It has to be brought into true awakening. But please, I urge you to remember the pace and the timing of your kundalini awakening totally leave to the Holy Spirit. Do not try to do it yourself. The kundalini is not something you can mess with. Because if it rises and finds impure parts, what I said earlier, the, it shoots forward into a descending channel in the front of your body and sh blasts you down into hell. Instead, let the pelvis become illuminated, the navel center, the solar plexus, reaches the heart, and if you try to act bold and, and egotistic, it shoots forward and down. That's that concept. How are you feeling? Down and out. It's, we're, we're down in this darkness. When we allow the Holy Spirit to be in charge of the timing and so forth, this is rising. Lights are being lit. Properly timed. Properly measured. The Holy Spirit knows exactly how much. Now, when we're talking about kundalini, remember, this is synonymous with your ascension. People that are like, I want to ascend. I heard about that today. I want that. And then they just get on the, 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 the vehicle, the, the, uh, you know, the ascension Harley. Ascend. Come on, kundalini. Up, up, up. And then, you know, weeks later, they're like walking down the streets. <laughs> you know, they've burned their kundalini casualties and... You know, they, they, they lose it. Which brings us to another point you asked, grounding. Grounding means integrating. Each part of my awakening needs to be grounded. One of the simplest and yet not understood techniques for grounding is to own where you are. Not just your atmosphere, your environment, but today I did a lot of healing work. So I'm a little, you know, jittered because memories were coming up and all that. Grounding means, and I got it. See, I got it. When you own, wow, that was a great massage. Wow, that was incredible lovemaking. Wow, that was that kundalini thing that happened. Wow, that dream I had. When you breathe it in and go, wow, that was great, you're grounding it. When you keep, I don't know what was going on. I don't know what that was about. And it's so much... See, that's very up here. It's just like when you walk in, some people describe they can feel static electricity, you know, around a storm time, right? You don't want to be that static electricity. It's not, it's not helpful. It's also not help. It, it's not practical. If somebody walks up, how are you doing today? You know, it's not real practical. They, they're waiting for an answer and you're buzzing. I'm doing fantastic. See, for me to answer, I had to show up and check in. How am I feeling? Wow, alive. See, that's integrated. Isn't it cool? You can ask thinkers about kundalini. and Well, the kundalini, you know, and scientifically speaking, you, you know, there's about a 10% value to that. But why would you want to listen to a person with only 10% value? You can ask mystics that have worked with yogis that have worked with kundalini for thousands of years, and you're going to get more like a 70% value out of it. A lot better. It's not 100, but why isn't it 100? Because the Taoist yogis, we'll call them, versus Hindu yogis, versus Buddhist masters, and so these masters of these different cultures that understand kundalini, they still differ. And why, did, why would they differ if they're all masters? So that becomes a little confusing. And one of the reasons they differ is not contradiction like it sounds. It's the emphasis of their philosophy. So if one school was being developed one day and they said the highest chakra, geographically speaking, anatomically is here. So let's put emphasis on the opening of the crown. Does that make sense? Great. But somebody else is like, it's all about love. So they make this the emphasis. Are they wrong? but they're contradicting the crown people. It's a different perspective, a different goal. Making sense? And someone else is talking about the third eye. Different schools. They're actually not contradicting, but because they come across like they are, and they sometimes even argue these points, that's why it's sometimes only 70%. Even sitting here and only hearing for the first time about Kundalini, you could 
in, for, in some ways, you could say, no more than even these masters that argue these points simply because you know, ah, it was just a different goal. One's emphasizing the heart, one's emphasizing the crown, and so on. But, and some, of course, emphasizing the root. It's all about the root chakra, or root yourself to the earth, and that's what the energy is all about. All of this is true. But the day is coming. We are in the midst of an ascension process. We really are. Ascension isn't a word meaning you're going to go to another planet, although some will. The word means ascending in consciousness. You get that? It's not a place you go. I get to ascend. Even if you think that place is a higher dimension. How do you go to a higher dimension without having a higher consciousness? It's all about consciousness. You shouldn't even want to go to the fifth dimension with the same consciousness you had yesterday. I, I would hope that you would say, no, uh, give me a minute. I got I to gotta get my consciousness kind of in that space, right? It doesn't feel good to be taken into the fifth dimension when you're a third dimensional person. It can be a little overwhelming, to say the least. Even moving and navigating between dimensions, it, it can be a, a weird experience on your nervous system, but it, you know, it's done. But again, you don't want to do that on your own accord. Please, no. You don't want to raise your own kundalini. You don't want to make yourself ascended. Be nice. Just work on being a better person, loving, be not better perfectionist, you know, externally. I'm talking about just grow in consciousness. How? What did I say? The, the keys to that gate are love, peace, right? What am I, how am I being of service? It's really in my heart, I'm being of service. So those keys open up. Any of those keys, because they're all the same, they're love that opens that gate. You can stand in that center and say, wow, the yogis of the heart were right. This feels amazing. You're not home yet. There is one more step up. It's called Christ consciousness. This is my I am presence. Oh my God, how beautiful. How do I get there? You know, Michael, is there an herbal formula that I can snort? <laughs> uh, there's all kinds. Does it awaken Christ? No. How can you awaken Christ consciousness when you still have parts of you that aren't very Christy? You've got to get over the non-Christy bits. <laughs> Sounds like a cereal. <laughs> Mom, can I have some Christ consciousness bits? Sure, honey. Um, <laughs> But I mean, that's what it is. I mean, my non-Christy stuff means what? Judgments, resentments. So, so chill for a second. You're not going to hear a talk of, of how to in terms of intellect. I'm saying that you and I are made in God's image and that has never changed. But we forgot. Forgetting doesn't mean it, it changed. Just because you can't see the sun because of a cloud doesn't mean the sun isn't there. I am still one with God right? And that's your affirmation. That can't change. What you're working on are the clouds that obscure your vision of your true self. What are those clouds? Oh, you know, such a geek sometimes, man. I did this and I did this and I probably shouldn't. And the words over there and that comment, that, that reaction over there, and you start just, you know, forgiving it. Don't just forgive the things you've done and have done to you. Forgive that you even believed that that was in your field of experience. Forgive that, you know, just all of that's ridiculous. Uh, um, even if you're a victim of harm, and, and then some other lifetime I must have done some, forgive that. Forgive them this lifetime, forgive yourself some other lifetime. There's nothing else in my mind but to let those things go. Sometimes let them come to mind. Hello, my beloved child, this is God speaking. Would you like to be tested so you can move closer to heaven? Yes, my Lord, okay. Here's a memory. <laughs> Here's a memory. Is this memory, oh, you had to bring that one up. Oh, that person, what a jerk. What a selfish jerk. Great. God says, all I'm asking you is, is this more important than your divinity? <laughs> On some days, yes. Then you are some enlightened. 
You are some ascended. The day can come where there is nothing about that memory that has any value at all, even remotely close to the greatness of my choice to remember just God. To remember this or remember this. Hmm. When we're in our dysfunction, our addictive needs, and our addiction to hurtful memories of what we've done, guilt and shame, uh, towards others or what's been done to us, that actually is a choice we make. Strangely enough, we think it's just, you know, it's not my fault, it's just there. No, man, no, not at all. It's a choice to do this. So that means we're not choosing this, our divinity. And we wonder why we don't ascend faster. Just evaluate, just sit back and say, if I haven't ascended or if I don't feel like a, uh, I'm growing exponentially each day into consciousness, that's actually synonymous with saying that I'm choosing this, memories of judgment, pain, resentment. You have to be. That's the only thing that can keep you from being here. So if it's not happening, someone is choosing otherwise. But is that really helpful? No. Is it valuable? This is why A Course in Miracles will say, let me ask you this. We're not going to tell you to get rid of all this. We're just going to ask you this. Does it serve you? Do you feel happy? No? Okay, well then, we're just asking. If you're not happy, would you be open to, oh, I don't know, being happy? <laughs> yeah, and he, and he actually hooks you. It's very tricky, this Christ guy. He hooks you by, by just going, okay, oh, well, look, you know, butterflies and birds, and it distracts you playfully, I'm saying this. He'll say, um, so how are you feeling about that experience, that hurt, that wound, that relationship? How are you feeling about that? Not very good. He, see, he's hooking you because he's got you into realizing you're not happy. Then he's going to throw in, would you like to be happier? It's called a logical progression but it's really a base word for it, phrase for it. Logical, so you're not happy? Okay, would you like to be happy? Yes, okay. Would you be willing to let go of unhappiness to be happy? Yes. Okay, um, then go ahead and say, I am, and he starts taking you in that direction. And it's kind of funny because he's just asking things that are common sense. I am not happy, and I don't like that, and I want that. Well, why didn't we just do that in the first place? That's, he has to peel it away. He has to kind of slot in you owning each piece. I am not happy with how it's been. And I believe there is another way. I am ready to choose that other way. I am now choosing that other way. You see? He has to take us a step at a time because that's the style of the course. A step at a time so that it doesn't overwhelm our egos. Now, wait a minute, I know you're up to something. Because if you just go, I'm totally miserable, I'm ready to be ascended. You know, the ego's like, you've got to be kidding me. You don't have a clue as to what kind of, you know, files and programs I got on you, man. You know, I got to, you know, just even talk enlightenment, I'm going to your first marriage. You know, talk, talk love and oneness. I got some backseat footage from when you were in high school. Or your 50th anniversary, whenever that was. Whenever you finally hit the back seat, I've got film footage and it's just like, you know, shame. You have to be able to just tentatively go, this, oh my God. You know, here I am. And what's amazing is the ego saying, don't, I wouldn't do it if I were you. <laughs> the ego has never looked out for your highest good. But yet we're going to think it is when we go, thank God, you know, it said don't. Oh. <sighs> And there it is. Most of the time, there's no film footage because time doesn't exist in God. There's no videos. Well, where, where are the videos? We have none. And then the ego is going to go, that's terrible. That's called the silence. That's the void. Now you're part of nothingness. <gasps> Nothing. Oh, this is like hell, oblivion. You're right. And no. On the other side of the silence is everything. It's God. But you have to endure that moment, that intimidating moment of, are you willing to look at your stuff? And the trick is, the Holy Spirit rarely will say, honey, 
I do for your for reasons in you, not because she determines it per se, but I do need you to look at this one thing. Could you do that for me? Yes, and then you look. But most of the time, there's nothing there. The whole last judgment, tribulation, and all these other words that come up that came up in our request earlier, a lot of this is like intimidating because the, the final judgment. And when we stand and realize, wait a minute, if God is a loving God, all I'm going to see is love. But you have to be able to endure that awkward moment. Okay, let it rip. <laughs> Hit play. And, you know, and you're thinking, and you've been programmed this too, once that film starts, oh, it's all the and, you know, bad things you've ever done. Your life flashes before your eyes. That's what it's referred to sometimes. Oh, my life flashes. Be oh, my life. You know, some people can say, my life has been so bad. So that means you've already prejudged yourself, which means at the end of judgment day, you go to hell. Why? Because the judge, which is you, judged yourself as naughty, bad, shameful, whatever, and now punishes you. But it's not like just hell and damnation. It just means earth again, which feels like hell. <laughs> 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 you know, <laughs> you'd never see me doing ads for visits to earth, huh? <laughs> On the other side, hey, looking for a good time? Planet earth is just for you. <laughs> Lots of limitation, pain, over and over again. So, <laughs> so, bringing this, as we're going to start closing, to a, a physiological experience. Kundalini once solidified my body, my nerves, eventually skin, and gave me two eyes. The serpent lied to me and said it, I would awaken. I only awakened to a world of limitation, which is not very awake at all. Awaken means brought my awareness to it. That's what happened because I raised the kundalini, et cetera, in an unhealthy, remember, it was the intention behind raising it. Individuate, I will become an individual thinker. That's biblical, right? I will become individuated. I, my eyes will be opened. I didn't think this through. When my eyes opened, my eye closed. So Jesus says, thousands of years later, later let thine eye be single and you will be filled with light. So as I practice love, forgiveness, right, these concepts, I walk into the gateway, the garden. The key are those tools, love, peace, joy. But the gateway to heaven is in my heart. And once I reach that place, I have to make another decision. Is it just going to stay in kind of a love and compassion, which is fantastic, highest human consciousness, or can I surrender and completely accept my divinity? Which the heart's going to tell you, well, of course you can, but you still have free will. And you might say, not yet. It's a little much. Let me just hang out here for a while. And that's okay. So your heart will be fed. The kundalini will rise to the level of your consciousness and meet you there, which might be your heart. Very, very cool. There's also a point where I can say, not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, thy will be done. And I trust the mother to be my guide. She's my midwife, right? The Holy Spirit of God. Now, what happens is the light, the kundalini starts to rise to other levels and it starts activating my third chakra down. That's my, my first of these three, but the third counting down, the thyroid, the uh, throat chakra, the Christ, it's called the Christ center. Christ center because Christ was called in the Bible, the word of God. This is my spoken word. Okay, so this center starts to open my Christ self, which is great news, but it still means any non Christy things in that center have to be looked at. So there's a tribulation with every one of these centers. Tribulation simply meaning tests and, and these are tangible tests, not just theoretical, tangible life tests with each chakra. The dark night of the soul happens to us when we have dared to even approach the heart chakra. Yeah, yeah. Then the you know the ego's like, oh really, Mister Heart Chakra? Let's see how you handle love and oneness when we hit you with everything going wrong in your life. 
but I believe in love and patience. Patience, really? We're going to flatten all four tires of your car. See how patient you are now. This is what the dark night's like, because you've reached the heart. But anyway, going higher into the I am trinity of God, it sounds like, oh, that's so, it is beautiful. But every bit of non-God has to be looked at still. Archangel Michael is not the way. Christ consciousness is the way, as we've heard and studied and learned. Archangel Michael himself says, I am not the way. I am the guardian of the way. Here's what that means. Anyone who commits to awakening Christ consciousness is going to be attacked. And I will be standing there with my sword, hacking away at everything that tries to come at you. Unfortunately, it also means your own attachments. This is hurting. Well, I'm hacking away your attachments. Well, why don't you hack some of the enemies? They are your enemies. <laughs> you are your worst enemy. So I wouldn't put your limbs out. Because <laughs> I'm just in a hacking mood, you know. <laughs> you know, Kwai Cheng, <laughs> Archangel Kwai Cheng came. So <laughs> that's what Michael does. He's the guardian of the way. So anything extraneous, because you made a huge commitment, you're not just making a commitment to being a little nicer partner. That's one of the lower chakras. Going back to high school, college, or whatever school it is to finish degrees. That's, guys, that's not Archangel Michael worthy. There's other archangels that will say, you know, we can help you pick Yale or whatever, right? Those are other angels that can handle that. Get into Archangel Michael. It means you have made a commitment to remembering who you are. And that light, and there's even a, a story of there's a, 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 a guardian angel, um, an archangel, who's guarding the gates of the Eden, you know, the Garden of Eden. And that is that when you get to this place, there's, you'll see a flaming, uh, uh, like a bright light. And some of you have had this, by the way. But when you see this bright white light in meditation, you're actually seeing the sword of the archangel that's protecting the Garden of Eden, not allowing unworthy people to enter. So if you've ever had that, and it doesn't mean, oh, I never saw a white light. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing the white light doesn't matter. You know what? Get a flashlight. Poof. <laughs> that doesn't make you holy. I'm, it just adds a little coolness. Okay? It's just, if you're a rude person and you happen to be sensitive to see purple auras on people, it's great, but you're still rude. You... <laughs> Don't worry about, I need the white light or I'm not spiritual. Forgiving yourself for your judgments of not seeing the white light will actually take you there quicker <laughs> than getting on the, on the Kundalini Harley. You know, just <laughs> go easy on yourself, man. Forgive yourself. It's going to be okay. That said, when put in the hands of the mother, she'll take you upwards and into this place. You will reach the heart, the gate. You're at the gate, man. You're there and expanding love, peace, joy. Then there'll be a calling. Would you like to go to the next level? I would just say yes if I were you, to God, to God. <laughs> yes, your will, not mine, be done. Now we're going to introduce you to somebody. Hey, you know, Michael, this is Archangel Michael. Don't be intimidated by the sword. He's there to protect you because you're now walking into the way of Christ consciousness the highest mankind can achieve. And you walk into this place and that sword's there to cut things away from your life that aren't quite pure or, you know, Christy. And when this happens, as we rise in consciousness, the pineal and pituitary are activated, your crown and third eye. Those are activated. Now something different happens because the kundalini reaches the top and then my cup runneth over, King David said. You, you take me beside still waters. You restore my soul. My cup runneth over. He's describing an enlightenment process where the kundalini rose to the top, didn't blast out the head to the ethers. It poured over. In Egyptian tradition, they wear the headdress that has the cobra here. Why? Because it means I am an initiate of this kundalini energy. So they wear this crown with the serpent here, meaning it has risen and it's pouring over. In yoga, you do the microcosmic orbit. You go up and down the front because you're not trying to get away from anything. You're saying, I've reached a certain level of consciousness. I will go back and apply it. 
I reached another level of higher consciousness, and I'm going to go back and apply it. That's the bodhisattva. That's the, the grand thing to do. Anything you reach in terms of an enlightenment, come back and share it. Become that more of that thing and bring it. Don't just walk around and go, I don't care about any of you because I'm totally crowned open and I'm cosmic. <laughs> can, you, can you give me a ride? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I can't even drive. I mean, <laughs> can I borrow your car? Uh, I don't even know if I have one. <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> anyway. In closing, what happens is the energy comes up, it ignites. The kundalini now properly being used, it ignites. Not just your seven chakras, all of a sudden, it, it's, it's igniting 12. 12 st strands of DNA, 12 systems in the body, 12 pairs of cranial nerves. Everything's happening. The Divine Mother, who you see in statuary and pictures, has a crown of 12 stars. It means even the zodiac is something that I wear. It doesn't control me. It is me, and I am it. See, I don't just ascend, like, like I don't just become a master of the earth plane, which is these chakras. I'm now one and master over the universe. That's why the Divine Mother and Mother Mary artwork shows these 12 stars. She wears it as a crown, meaning this is my consciousness. 12, which is a common number to represent complete. These 12, I'm crowned with them. They're my consciousness. They don't control me. I'm, I'm, I am that consciousness. I am all things to all people. So something really extraordinary happens, you see? So the kundalini ties into this. This is all about love, really, love and the kundalini. Understanding the highest aspects of love as an initiation. Love, the heart's role, but also kundalini. Hold negative stuff here, the kundalini can rise and it'll become a painful experience because I'm not healed. So why rush it? Keep working on your healing. When the obstacles go, the flow of the kundalini just naturally goes there because it notches in to any openings. Force it and it starts blasting things and those things blasted become experiences you have to go through now. Leave it to the mother. Let the Holy Spirit guide. Trust. Trust in that. I am in good hands with the Holy Spirit. And then all of a sudden, we become like, oh my God, call it quasars, you know, call it, call it uh, um, nuclear plants. But it's true. Your body will burst into light because you'll become what's called the real body of Christ. Church has presented the body of Christ as being a compressed piece of bread. I, no, really. I mean, that's what, you know, body of Christ, you do the communion. Body of Christ, now, if you were to go and they say, would you like the body of Christ? No, I'm good. Because it's inside. It's, it's the Holy Spirit igniting you into light, and light is synonymous with Christ. Right? Let there be light. I am. So that's where we're going in our ascension process. If you don't see light, don't worry, it's happening. Don't worry about it. If you need to see it, that might become one of your lessons and not be able to see it because that's what you're caught up on, you know, caught up in. Just let it go. Just let it be. Trust in God. Let this, wow, I just, whew. just the feeling, just the vibes in the room here. Just the vibes. It's right here with us, guys. Right? You see it? You, can you feel that at all? Like there's an ah, what? Like an awe. I'm talking and I'm still hearing the music that he started with. And I'm still hearing the opening reading. Because this is designed not by man. This is designed by God. What I hear today. If you heard anything that doesn't work for you, doesn't make sense, good. Let it go. Let it fall away. Thoughts and tensions. Parts that didn't make sense. Parts that might have questioned what you already thought you knew. It doesn't matter. Let those things go. Let go of where you're going to go have lunch. Let go of comfort, comfort, non-comfort in your body, sitting online, distractions in the room, the house. Just what if the spiritual is real? 
What if we really are ascending, guys? What if? Say to yourself, what if this is all true? That we've never left home and now we're remembering. And that the remembering is like being in our hearts again. Being in our hearts is love, peace, patience, compassion. Those are the keys that will unlock that heart. Good. It unlocks the door home. What if it's true that there really are archangels and angels and guides assigned to me to help me? Do I really have to die to see them? Why don't I just believe it now? That I matter. All beings of light are encouraging me home. Every step I make, they are aware of it. And they're singing praises, not stroking my ego, but singing praises that I'm awakening. I know it's heavy sometimes to not remember these things. I know sometimes that's not what you're thinking when you're in the middle of death of a loved one or a divorce. And so I know, I know. But that's when you have to practice saying, despite what I think I see, God is, I am, we are. Breathe that in for a moment. What if it's all okay? The light is bursting in me now. I am ascending.
light from the heavens down like you're a vessel, a cup, your arms being the receptacle. Draw that light down. Let the host descend down, the Holy Spirit descend down, becoming that vessel that I am. My upper three chakras is the presence of holiness. Take the hands once more down to the heart. Let's take that energy. Is my heart deserving of God's presence? And breathe it in. And my lower three centers, whether you put your hands on your tummy or your hips, anchor that divine light to all centers of the body, all parts of our being, our cells, our energy systems filled with light. Let thine eye be like it's our belief systems. Let our belief systems be single. That God is, and I am, and we are, and we will be filled with light. Each of us worthy of the perfect presence of God and of healing. Nothing we've ever thought, said, or done so far gone that it's beyond the grace of God. Anything else would just be my willfulness to remain broken. Thank you, Mother. Holy Spirit of God. And so it is. Gradually integrate. Good. Just take a moment to integrate. Oh. How are we feeling? Good, good. Allow that all to integrate. Be more truthfully informed about light, ascension, kundalini, love, compat heart, you know, let this all be gr the greatness it really is. No settling. Really understand this. This isn't a fancy thing, kundalini. It's my consciousness. And it rises as I rise in consciousness. And I choose to let that be under the control of the mother because she knows exactly what I need. And she can peel away the pieces that would have been uncomfortable if I were driving my own story here. I allow God's will to be in and through me as me. Good? I just, uh, I wanted to share a little bit, uh, a little more context because of what a beautiful uh, sharing today. And, um, you know, I invoked, we invoked Shiva, Krishna, Rama in these chants and you know, I think a lot of times people can get hung up on the kind of iconic figures that are <laughs> portrayed, and yet underneath the figures is the vibration of the mantras, and the mantras themselves, you know, are really said to be formless. You know, it's directing the mind towards infinity. But if we are to put a definition to these things um, or a form, you know, then it col has cultural context. But um, but if we look at Shiva, for example, Shiva just means uh, the auspiciousness, the auspicious one, all auspiciousness. So when we say Shiva Hum, for example, it means I am, I am the uh, the auspiciousness of all that is, right? And Krishna meaning the all attractive. So it's like sh the all attractive force of consciousness, the all attractive force, and Rama being also that solar, that light of illumination. And Hare can be somewhat loosely refers to the Kundalini. It refers to Shakti. So it's like, may my consciousness raise to that place to the all-attractive, to the illumination of Krishna and Rama. Mm -hmm. you know? 
So I just wanted to give you that context because I think <coughs> sometimes you can be like, why, why are we chanting that when we're just talking about this, you know? Um, so I just felt that that was important to clarify. You know, yeah. even the tone and the feeling while that chant was happening, the, interp the vibe I had, not the word, the vibe, is just like praise all, to all that it, to God and in and through us. And, you know, I, I was seeing in, in the, the words are there to focus the mind, but the result I was seeing us praising brothers and sisters, whether they're found or lost, just praising the God, the essence in all, you know, it felt very honoring. So everybody really got in the right, great space of mind, you know, state of mind. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. And we're going to do our closing prayer. If you don't mind, we're going to do our collection first. Please be as generous as you can be. There are folks online. There's a button you can click to stay, give donations. Um, and I'm really grateful to all of our uh, team members because that button's actually worked for like two years straight. Um, <laughs> used to be like it was every alternate leap year it would work. <laughs> you know, the, you know, we got we got that down. We're, bless you. We're almost all that is working, you know, so well. So you can make donations online. Um, you can always call our office to make donations uh, as an aside. But here, the donations in the purple bags are your primary donations. Thank you. The wicker baskets are for any extra donations you can share for people of lesser means that we help or some of our special projects. All righty. Our uh, obelisk is just about done. It's taking time to, to dry, and they're gonna, there's still more more to do on that, so probably a week from now you'll be able to get to it, our labyrinth and obelisk, okay? So many blessings. We hold our love offering to our heart. <clears throat> Together, please, divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. <clears throat> It'll take just a minute for them to pass those around, and while they are, can anyone share what they learned or heard today that made the most sense, that might be the most important for you, or for people around you, your friends, our students? Our tour, <coughs> two trucks and Jeanette going over there. I mean, who had that and finding that? All that about the heart being the doorway, and then up, down the front again. That's right. My cup runneth over. Right. Hell is in the pelvis. Yeah. Yeah, hell, hell is in the pelvis. <laughs> <clears throat> well, I mean, yeah, yes. Two things. The first one is, um, you know, Keith Barnum, he sent me this email this morning, and it said transcend equals trans end. Mm. And I thought that was right in alignment with what we talked right about. On. You know, right on. Right. thing is a meditation I had done with Service of the Light many, for many years is the rising, which just makes you climbing around your core. Right. Right. And so fascinating. The caducus serpents meet yeah, at the third eye. Right. Totally that. And, and it wasn't <clears> like I didn't even know what I was doing, you know, and I certainly wasn't trying to have a Kundalini Kali experience, mm -hmm. you know, because it was an everyday meditation for right. years. Nice. You know, and it was just this visualization that just became so normal. Right. I'm sure that it really happened. Even the symbol, um, that serpent, the Kundalini, the uh, caducus. You'll see two serpents. That's the Ida and Pingala, the kind of like the masculine and feminine, weaving their way up. But notice the symbol. There's a rod down the middle with a ball at the top. That isn't the masculine and feminine channel. That is the Christ channel, the center of the center. And the ball at the top means here, you know, it's this is open now. This is illuminated. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. Release, surrender, allow. Trust the, journey. Trust the journey. Nice, nice. Thank you for being, you know, lighthearted and open-minded to the way things that we do things here. Laughing a little bit at some of the crazy, silly things that go on in this world. Nothing has power over us other than that which we give power to. How could there be something outside with power when there's nothing outside? That's like saying, I want to go get water, but my TV isn't allowing me to. You're just watching the screen. This is just a glorified hologram of a TV. So you're just watching scenes. But yet, I can't be happy. I can't live if living is without you. It's like you got to be kidding. She's not even there. He's not even there. I can't live if living is without 
that shadow figure on the wall that isn't really there. That may, that's not a very empowering song, right? <laughs> I can't live if living is without nothingness. It's, it's just strange. So, so I appreciate the, the open-mindedness. Valerie's over there holding a notebook up, and that's if anybody wants a private uh, session, the, the crystal bed, you can sign up for sessions in the foyer there. A uh, last couple of things. Um, there are some brand new, every week, new gift items over there on that table. Um, some really, really stellar additions that went over there this last week. Um, are you there, Dosi? No? Okay. What are a couple of the items? Am new, yeah, amethyst, new ones, yep. Did you know you were going to be doing this at a service today? <laughs> nice. <laughs> Some beautiful smudge wands, uh, feathered wands, we, like a half dozen. They're fantastic. So thanks for, thanks for sharing. Um, and um, hopefully, you know, everything made sense today, but remember, let it integrate. Give it some time, the, the talk, and blessings on the meditation. Um, let's give a, another final uh, gratitude to Ananda Das. Yeah, absolutely stellar. Thank you. Um, he has products and contact info in the foyer. However, I want to add, feel free for any of our musicians, but feel free to leave any extra donations with him for gratitude. If couple hundred of us even put a dollar it's it's nice it's it's a substantial something so support gifted you know creative musicians and folks that share their light here um, anytime you want to know what's going on in the area um, look at our website it'll tell you once a month psychic fair the 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 Sedona psychic fair it's fantastic we have a Beltane festival coming up so we can cut loose and oh my god you should be a fly on the wall of those meetings Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got everything going, maypoles and fairy dancers and all kinds of, yeah, yeah, tripping out, you know. So um, please stand for our closing prayer. You'd be tripping, yeah. So breathing in, still hear that music, still hear the tones, the harmony, the feeling, the, the lifetimes of Dedication for music through Ananda Das and spirit coming through. The talk, your presence, the sacred reading. Just feel it all. This is part of what's called the happy dream. It's still for now. It's still a dream, but it's a happy dream. How could I be experiencing this happy dream if I hadn't raised to the level of consciousness to match this? to create this. So this is also a statement of my progress. Even if this is the first day of hearing something good, I'm experiencing my progress. And thank you, God, for the guidance. Thank you for taking me here. Thank you, Mother, for mirroring my progress. Help me to forgive myself for all the times I didn't see it. And to all my brothers and sisters in this program and around the world and throughout the universe, all dimensions, all time, it's great to know who we really are, the light of God. This light of God surrounds us. We are the light of God. This love of God enfolds us. We are the love of God. The power of God protects us. We are the power of God. And the presence of God watches over us. We are the presence of God. Wherever we go, God is, I am, we are, and so it is. Peace be with you all. Thank you.